Boson Cat is an experimental isomorphic keyboard for the teletype in conjunction with the model grid. It takes inspiration from controllers like the Lumitone keyboard as well as other keyboards that use a Boson Cat Wilson layout. What isomorphic means is that you can use shapes to more easily and efficiently recall musical structures, much like you would on the guitar by moving a hand shape up and down the neck. To get an idea of just a few things you can do with Boson Cat, here are some short clips from some recent live demos that I recorded during the development of the scene. the grid will light up to show the Boson Cat layout of the default temperament, which is 12 tap. And the live mode dashboard will print out some information about the current keyboard state. Specifically, the dashboard displays the current temperament, octave offset, hold mode state, and shift mode state. Before we start changing temperaments, octaves, and modes, let's go over how the keyboard layout works. The lightest keys, arranged in descending lines of three notes, then four notes, show the placement of the closest approximation for the major scale in a particular temperament. As you progress along the x-axis from left to right, you increase by one whole tone. As you progress along the y-axis from the bottom to the top, you increase by one semitone. More on these values when we get to how we store the temperament information in the teletype's patterns. The darker keys denote other tones in the temperament. Some temperaments, such as 12 tet only have two light levels. Others, such as 19 tet, need three or more light levels to distinguish between various amounts of microtonal offsets. In this way, you can visually navigate around the keyboard while using the same shapes to create the same musical structures across many different temperaments. Keep in mind, though, that these shapes will vary slightly between some temperaments as more and more notes are added to the octave, but they will remain consistent within the same temperament. The actual keyboard takes up the leftmost 15 columns of the grid, and contains 120 playable keys. The single rightmost column of the grid contains various controls for changing temperaments, octaves, and modes. Let's go over those one at a time. The top three buttons of the control column are for switching temperaments. Hitting the top button will switch to the previous temperament, while hitting the bottom button will switch to the next. Hitting the middle button will reset the keyboard back to the default temperament, which is 1210. The specific order of the temperaments is defined by the pattern data where the temperament information is stored. Pattern 0 contains the division of the temperament, 12 for 12 tet, 19 for 19 tet, and so on. Pattern 1 contains the semitone step for the temperament, which is the vertical grid interval. Pattern 2 contains the whole tone step for the temperament, or the horizontal grid interval. The numbers you will find if you browse the pattern data for these intervals represent how many unit intervals make up a semitone and whole tone. In this case, a unit interval is just the interval between two adjacent notes in the octave. In 12 tet, this is 1 12th of an octave. In 19 tet, this is 1 19th of an octave, and so on. Using this setup for data storage, we can use the index of the first pattern to track which temperament we are in and construct the keyboard layout dynamically using that information. This is exactly what happens when you load the scene or switch layouts. 
Now on to the bottom three buttons of the control column. These are for changing the octave offset of the teletype's CV outputs. These function very similarly to the temperament controls in that the upper button increases the offset by one octave or one volt, the lower button decreases the offset by one octave or one volt, and the middle button resets it back to the default, which is two volts. The middle two buttons of the control column are where things get fun. These are our mode controls. First is hold mode. The upper button is a latching button that toggles hold mode. By default, hold mode is disabled, which means hitting a key on the keyboard will pulse the trigger outputs. When you toggle hold mode on, the trigger outputs will now act as gates that remain high as long as you are holding a key. Regardless of whether hold mode is on or off, the number of trigger outs that will fire is exactly the number of keys being held down on the grid keyboard up to a max of four, since the teletype only has four trigger outs. This sets us up for some pseudo polyphony down the road after we introduce shift mode. The lower button is a latching button that toggles shift mode. By default, shift mode is disabled, which means only the first CV output is being used by the keyboard. When you toggle shift mode on, the remaining three CV outs will be set to their left neighbor's pitch value in a shift register style. The trigger for the shift is on key press. Combining these outputs into a single voice, or plugging them into multiple voices playing simultaneously, you can achieve the pseudo-polyphony that was mentioned earlier. Of course, you could also talk them into an arpeggiator, or any number of different musical use cases. The sky's the limit. If you're looking to create a traditional synthesizer type of setup, just toggle both hold mode and shift mode on and enjoy your four-voice polyphony. When viewing a dashboard, the mode indicators will show a zero when the mode is disabled, and a 1 when it is enabled. You can also tell if a mode is enabled or disabled by the light level of its toggle button on the grid. Currently, Boson Cat can properly display layouts for a small subset of tunings, while other tunings with more notes per octave, such as 41 tet or 53 tet, don't render their light levels correctly. However, the scene will still calculate the correct microtonal pitch on key press, so if you don't mind having to navigate around the keyboard with incorrect light levels, you can feel free to use these extra tunings. If you go into the pattern data, you'll notice that the length of pattern 0 is manually set to limit the available tunings by default. You can increase this length to include the other tunings that exist below the default ones. You can also feel free to add your own tunings, as long as they are compatible with this type of isomorphic layout. This keyboard is meant to be compatible with any Pythagorean-like scale system. If there is one that you want to use that isn't in the pattern data, you can add it with the necessary interval information, as described in the section about the temperament controls. Just don't be disappointed if the light level layout doesn't look right when you recall the tuning on the keyboard. That's pretty much all you need to know before getting your hands dirty with the scene. If you want to download this teletype scene and play around with it yourself, you can find a link in the description to my GitHub where I stash a lot of my teletype scripts. Uh, it will specifically take you to a section with my grid controller scenes where you can find Bosonquette and an included reference document, which is basically just what I've already spoken about in this video, uh, in case you want to reference that while you're using it without having to pull up YouTube. Have fun! Mm -hmm.